Putin, the unification of Russia and Ukraine is inevitable. The spiritual reunification of Russia and Ukraine is inevitable. Russian President Vladimir Putin said this during his speech at the World Youth Festival. I am sure that thanks to people like you, as I said, sooner or later, at least on the spiritual level, unification will happen. This is inevitable, Putin said at the meeting with the participants of the festival. Putin stressed that it is necessary to eradicate everything that prevents this. This is prevented by the most disgusting manifestations of nationalism. This is a disaster that poisons the lives of many peoples, including Ukraine today. He refers to the large number of flashpoints in the world, said that any war and any hostilities are a tragedy. Yes, indeed, the situation is difficult. There are many problems and many flashpoints, he told. Here, we have a conflict with our neighbors nearby. Hostilities are underway. Could it be more problematic? Putin continued. This is always a tragedy when people fight each other. People die, after all, they get injured and so on, he added. Putin has lambasted the West's double standards in regards to conflicts around the world. Putin recalled at a meeting with participants of the World Youth Festival that the United States took action in Iraq, Syria and former Yugoslavia without the UN Security Council's approval. Well, if they have permission, why are not other countries allowed to protect their vital interests in the same manner? He asked rhetorically. The Russian president told the meeting how the West justified its bombardment of Yugoslavia. My counterparts used to tell me repeatedly, well, yes, we did it without the UN Security Council's resolution. But the war had been raging there for so many years. Eight years of bloodshed in Donbass. Something had to be done. Putin recounted the words of his counterparts. An oil tanker carrying crude owned by the US was confiscated by Iran. It was noted that Iranian Navy and Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps seized the American oil cargo carried by Advantage Sweet Tanker in the Persian Gulf after the court order was issued. The U.S. oil cargo was seized from the Advantage Sweet oil tanker in the Persian Gulf. A group of Iranian patients suffering from epidermolysis bullosa, a rare inherited skin disorder, filed a complaint against the U.S. at the International Relations Legal Court in Tehran. The patients alleged that the sanctions imposed by the U.S. and other Western countries prevented a Swedish company from selling special medical bandages and pharmaceuticals to Iran, causing serious physical and mental harm to them. As a result of the order issued by the court, an oil cargo belonging to the U.S. was seized from the Advantage Sweet oil tanker in the Persian Gulf. The value of the oil shipment is estimated to be more than $50 million. The United States reinstated its sanctions against Iran in May 2018 after leaving a United Nations-endorsed nuclear agreement with the Islamic Republic and five other countries. Since then, Molnik Healthcare, a Swedish medical device company headquartered in Gothenburg, has stopped selling pharmaceuticals and medical equipment, including special bandages for epidermolysis bullosa patients, to Iranian companies, citing the unilateral U.S. sanctions, the move has deprived epidermolysis bullosa. Patients of essential medical items killed many of them and inflicted serious physical injuries such as amputation to some of the patients. The Persian Gulf has witnessed numerous incidents in recent years, such as attacks on tankers and cargo ships, amid escalating tensions between Iran and the United States. Three Red Sea data cables cut as Houthis launch more attacks. Three cables under the Red Sea that provide global internet and telecommunications have been cut as the waterway remains a target of Yemen's Houthi rebels, officials said. The Associated Press reported this. Meanwhile, a Houthi missile attack set a ship ablaze in the Gulf of Aden but caused no injuries. While global shipping has already been disrupted through the Red Sea, a crucial route for cargo and energy shipments from Asia and the Middle East to Europe, the sabotage of telecommunications lines could further escalate the months-long crisis. The cut lines include Asia Africa Europe 1, the Europe India Gateway, Seacom and TGN Gulf, Hong Kong-based HGC Global Communications said. It described the cuts as affecting 25% of the traffic flowing through the Red Sea. It described the Red Sea route as crucial for data moving from Asia to Europe and said it had begun rerouting traffic. HGC Global Communications described the Seacom TGN Gulf Line as being two separate cables when it is actually one at the area of the cut, according to 
Tim Strong, a sub-sea cable expert with Telegeography, a Washington-based telecommunications market research company. Responding to questions from the Associated Press, Seacom said that initial testing indicates the affected segment lies within Yemeni maritime jurisdictions in the Southern Red Sea. It said it was rerouting the traffic that it was able to change, though some services were down. Tata Communications, part of the Indian conglomerate and behind the Seacom TGN Gulf Line, told that it initiated immediate and appropriate remedial actions after the line was cut. Other firms behind those lines, which provide data to Africa, Asia and the Middle East, didn't respond to queries. Iran has supplied Russia with ballistic missiles, UK. The UK believes Iran has supplied Russia with ballistic missiles, Defense Secretary Grant Shapps indicated, according to Politico, in an interview with the House magazine, the senior minister confirmed that Britain has information on the reported provision of surface-to-surface -surface missiles from Iran to Russia, but declined to get into the details. The Reuters news agency reported in February that the Iranian regime had supplied Russia with a large number of ballistic missiles, a report that sparked a swift warning from the US that, if true, Iran would be greeted with a severe response from the international community. Iran publicly denied supplying Russia with the missiles. Speaking this week, Shaps suggested Britain has intelligence backing up the claim. I do. I can't get into it. Shaps told the House magazine when asked if he had any information on Iran's provision of ballistic missiles to Russia. But whether it's ballistic missiles or the Shahed drones that they supplied Russia with, we've seen that if there's struggle in the world, often Iran are egging it on or helping to supply the food chain in this case, he said. Shaps added, they are a bad influence, not just on their region, but in this case in Europe as well. Any supply of missiles from Iran to Russia would indicate a strengthening of military ties between the two countries. Tehran initially held off from offering Russia missiles due to the threat of further sanctions.